Oh, I'm gonna get there in the chair. One moment, please. Oh. Oh. All right, let me try to get the seat a little bit higher. Ooh. Oh. Okay, have to kind of make a quick capture when it comes to the demographics around a webcam screen. I only have so much depth, diameter. What I'm going to be discussing with you today, and I hope you're comfortable because I'm totally comfortable, is a topic that's very dear to my heart. And I've written a lot about it. I have done video portrayals through uh, monologue or absurdist comedy around it. And uh, it's all enveloping the sexuality of men, pardon me, the male sacred sexuality and the identity of a man's masculinity, which leads me into really honing in on the imitation of psychological masculinity. We may want to take the word psychological out of it because that creates a whole study of the mind. and. I just, in this very short period of time, not having a class or a workshop or a summit or a seminar, just settling with just a talk, a discussion on the imitation of masculinity. So let's, let's know that it's psychological, certainly, and sociological, absolutely, where there's social psychology in the making of the man. The man that's socialized to kill, to fight, to defend, to spread as much dead blood across a country through carpet shootings to show liberty and to call it success. Okay. There's a whole group of men that don't believe that way. And so they're still stuck in a very conservative, modern, contemporary society with choices and rights to live out one's social justice and one's own democracy promotion without force. And when the man finds men that are into combat, alpha male, rough trade, culture of war crime, the man who's sensitive a non-fighter, feels like he has to put up a wall or create a front. And show masculinity. And when he does this, such as maybe even changing the tone of the voice to something like this. And I do that often because some of my audience out there are not flamboyant, gay, twink, queer, anything goes kind of guy on drugs, very open-minded, gives and he takes it, flip-flops, he's a top or bottom. Some of the men know nothing about being touched and touching another male, let alone loving and being loved by another male. They're afraid of stepping outside of that box psychologically and sociologically because of norms and shared attitudes and belief systems. Therefore, if I'm changing the tone of my voice and making it lower, and my audience having a select social population of straight masculine men, it's my desire to be able to reach out to the curious or the questioning in the LGBTQ community, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, LGBTQ. Q used to stand for queer, but because there is this bisexual questioning population, it's LGBTQ, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender questioning. You'll often hear it as LGBT. So in LGBT, we have transgender, we have lesbian, we have bisexual, we have questioning, we have the jock, we have the femboy, and there's such an amplification of maleness and 
the devout courage to prove that one is a man. Sometimes if it's not genuine, it'll result to this imitation of masculinity. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the talk, because that for a preface, for a foreword, is pretty lengthy. So thank you for being patient with me. I'm not really going to get into where I was uh, in Los Angeles. I was in Beverly Hills, and I'm not going to really explain what day of the week it is, because if I did that, you might have an idea of where I've been. You know, is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, blah, blah. Because I don't want us to stereotype any more than we already have in some of my video portrayals. Now, because of democracy and then having this demand to be what people want you to be, you become sensitive. And you may not have a lot of friends or close people. And so you will settle for people that control you just because you need somebody in your life and you're immensely lonely. When that happens, let's say for yourself, may not be you, but case study, case in point, the scenario, you're in the middle of it. And the only thing you can say is, man, I'm crazy. Maybe only to say, people are insistent, people are rude, they're deranged, and they disregard my emotions. And so, I'm being pulled in the direction that they want me to be pulled into, so I could mold, I could be molded, or put into their cooker cutter ideal of what they think a man is in society. Excuse me. So you may think that you are crazy because the powers that be kind of rule you. And so you put on a front, you put on a face because you don't know what it means to really be a man. So you give an imitation of masculinity. You're just fake, like a con artist, a fraud. You look back at yourself and you're just not happy with your personality. These are things that we want to change as men. And as we, as a collective consciousness, or better yet, an ethical, welcoming collective consciousness, we reach out to other men with masculinity. It could be muscularity, it could be career, it could mean uh, a low speaking voice. And we make those reaches and those leaps and those bounds in order to locate who we are through the discovery of self based on the awareness and awakening we get when they look into our eyes or they touch us or they suck our cocks or they butt plug us with their fingers. Whatever the activity may be, it might be go miniature golfing. But what we have to remember is that when we have this search and this frustration and not being able to keep the masculinity in our hands once we gravitate and we are allowed to hold it and touch it with a consensual adult of age, of course, and then we leave and we're forced to only live alone because we don't have any monogamous relationship. And so that temporal and that transitory and that fleeting moment of when we grasped that manhood, we're left alone at the end of the day, or at the end of the retreat, or the gay pride weekend, or the gay cruise to the Mediterranean. And we learn that what we had absorbed is just dripping and just falling through our fingers, because we're really not who we thought we were when we were reflecting that masculinity. We didn't know how to hold on to it. We didn't know how to build off that experience to have the manifestation of authentic masculinity. Again, it could be psychological or it could be sociological. 
so the nebulous here is that you may be struggling with what we call, and it starts with an I, a moment, One moment. Well, the word starts with an I. I was kind of take another look at the word. But the word is identity. And in that quest for gaining popularity or taking control and winning over and manipulating over another man's body, we find that our identity is almost like a vampire, almost sucking energy from another person like a parasite. This is all because we don't know our identity. And what we get and what we find and what we think we are, but we're really not, we think that we are of the huge deserving population, but yet we haven't worked hard for it. You or myself will create an imitation of masculinity. Now, when we, I won't just put it on you, when we collectively talk about this, one thing that comes to your mind is that it's very separatist. It's very isolationist because you like control. You like the glory. You like the growth. And you so desperately, above all those things I listed, crave attention. You want to be a winner. When you find a man that is a winner, that goes to bed with you, makes you feel like you are a winner. But then there's no relationship or friendship. It was just only a stranger. You go back to imitating what you think masculinity is. See, so you've learned that masculinity is stalking in a predatory society a pornographic society and trafficking out your body and selling your body just to get the attention for that split moment. And then when it ceases, no longer subsists, you're aggravated and you put on your mask and you imitate your masculinity. You imitate what you believe people want to see. You try too hard. I try too hard. We just don't let it happen. We're contrived. Something about our imitation of masculinity is not sincere. It's a front. It's a deception. We're busy trying and wanting to have more blessings and luckiness when all we need to do is just be silent and be in the present moment and accept who we are and what we are not and make peace with ourselves and make friends with the dark side make friends with the past our pasts and don't run away in some fleeting moment to get your instant gratification when the one that you need to be focused on is the you in the alone place to create so you can assimilate in the world and not be separatist and not be isolated but have that mask taken down have all the levels of your psyche ripped away like peeling an orange. 
we, collectively, want as many people to go along with us. And if people are not present in our nothingness, we grow awfully weary, we feel rejected. Where the blessing, therefore, is to be faced with the self, so the self can see the self for who the self really is. Nevertheless, our view of that moment is that we're being cheated and we're not getting what we want and we don't feel loved. And so we have to act out to gain attention and we use imitation characteristics of what true masculinity may be. We see the world as a negative thing. We woo people in by our brilliant ways of explaining the toxicity that we have in society or psychologically. People are absolutely entertained by the articulation that one has. So there could be a lot of talking and a lot of make-believing in this imitation of masculinity when one truly must learn to just be silent. One needs to focus on the positives and not the negatives. He can see the negatives and experience the negatives and after he is completely through, he can wash his hands and you may not be able to clean the slate, but you could move over and always start again. We need to emphasize the world being whole and us being part of that wholeness. No need for jealousy, no need for covetousness, no need for envy, no need to put down the progress of the world in as much as we want to be involved and we're not, and we feel like a bystander. The world does not have to be entirely broken and a disaster and filled with trauma and a mentally ill political system that's absolutely schizophrenic and going many different ways to give many different messages. These are the things that have broken people. But these are the things that can keep people from out of entering psychiatric hospitals. A little medication from your doctor or being hospitalized for a period of your life is fine, but being institutionalized and stigmatized can work against you if you're not working with a good psychotherapist. The mind generally wants to make sense of things, even if things in the mind seem positive, and the basic things of human living in the human experience in one society is filled with dread. One may not feel empowered to unite with people because one does not really know the self and their imitation of manhood is not really something people want to buy because it's just not lasting. It's insincere. In the imitation of masculinity, we all want people to join us and to join our club and join our team. To make contact with us in the simplicity of our fabrications. But at the end of the day, it's not the case. Because cream always rises to the top. And if something about our configuration is fake, it will absolutely catch up to us and we will be faced with addressing that imitation of masculinity. It just does not work the way we thought it worked when we were younger. So in all good blessings forwarded to you as a listener, I thank you and Enjoy your aging. The older we get, the more valuable we get like an antique. And the light bulb seems to turn on. And we have our own number.
and we got ourselves figured out. And that is to alert us to the new changes of ourselves that are real and not imitation. So be the man who you're meant to be. Truly.